Hi there, I'll be talking about my primary source archive now. Um, oops, it's not where I meant to be. Okay, so you can feel free to read this executive summary. It's the same one that I submitted on Canvas. I'll just give a brief overview. So I'm interested in the differences in um, public commentary, critique, and discussion of cultural appropriation versus homeless street style appropriation. So while fashion designers and influencers call it homeless chic, there's varying degrees of contempt and critique as to whether this is appropriation of homeless people and their clothing choices. Um, and even though there is some internet discussion, I still am curious as to whether there's a lack of intergroup discussion, right? So if there's a breadth of information available within homeless groups that's available to the public, like me, um, in which homeless people are talking about the fact that fashion designers are appropriating their clothing choices. Um, does this match the levels of intergroup discussion when it comes to cultural appropriation? Why or why not? So moving back to my archive. The parameters for my project are analyzing two designers, Daisuke Obana and his runway pictures, as well as Mark Jacobs and his runway pictures. So both of them um, came under a lot of heavy critique after their 2016 New York Fashion Week shows. Daisuke Obana was the one critiqued for homeless street style appropriation. Mark Jacobs was heavily critiqued for cultural appropriation. So simply there, that's me attempting to avoid bias, obviously, including a core example of both types of appropriation um, and also acknowledging that, and I'll talk about this later, especially in public perspectives of both types of appropriation, there's a lot of critique levied on Desuke Obana as well as Mark Jacobs. Um, and even though in my hypothesis, I kind of hinted the fact that there might be less discussion, critique, and accountability in the homeless area, in that appropriation group, there's still a lot of contempt and disgust for Obama's runway pictures. Similarly, in holding that, um, that, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Similarly, in attempting to avoid confirmation bias, I have kept the track here for my celebrities, which is also a parameter of my project, um, and keeping a, a, a pretty even balance of celebrities in both of those areas. So I have four that fall within cultural appropriation and four that fall within homeless street style appropriation. So Justin Timberlake falls into both. That's why I'm counting him twice. Um, what a guy. So yeah, I won't go into these too much because it would take too long to discuss them all. But yeah, those are the celebrities that I will be analyzing. Um, here we have the public perspectives. So this is separated into news articles and intergroup discussion on cultural appropriation. Um, so these are just a lot of panels of predominantly black educators, influencers, models, designers, uh, podcast hosts talking about their opinions on cultural appropriation and where they hold certain designers accountable to. News articles, uh, so the pluses and minuses here, by the way, these are not all the news articles I could find, there are many more, but the um, the publishing sources themselves are the ones that I've also found in the homeless category, uh, the homeless street style category, so I'm comparing the publication of those sources um, and how they've covered both types of appropriation. So the pluses and minuses here, as well as the signs, the positive and negative signs here, that's another way for me to keep track of whether or not I'm confronting the bias that could arise with my project. So I'm trying to keep track of, similar to labeling the CA and HA with celebrities, I'm trying to keep track of how many news articles hold a lot of contempt and disgust for the appropriation, and how many news articles say that oh, we should be able to just draw influence and it shouldn't be a big deal. Why is everybody worrying about this, right? So that's me trying to keep track of that and make sure that I have a pretty even balance um, 
and that I'm not favoring the perspective that might aid my hypothesis. Okay, also a uh, social media here. Um, this actually includes, I don't know why, this includes uh, social media for both the homeless street style appropriation and the cultural appropriation. I just have it in that folder. I need to move it over. All right, so here we have designer perspectives on cultural appropriation and homeless street style appropriation. Pretty simple, not as in-depth as the public perspectives. So um, again here, these all could have the um, that positive sign um, that some of the newspaper articles did because most of these designers are speaking in reaction to the critique that was levied on Daisuke Obana. Um, a lot of them are saying that we should be able to draw influence from these groups. We are providing a social commentary, a mirror to the public about what the future is to be. And so we shouldn't be receiving all this critique. We shouldn't feel like we're walking on eggshells. That's what a lot of these designers are saying. Designer perspectives on cultural appropriation. Um, both of those categories I'm attempting to include Daisuke Obana and Mark Jacobs' response to the critiques levied on them. <laughs> All right, so then lastly, we have accountability for cultural appropriation and accountability for homeless street style appropriation. Um, again, pretty bare, obviously, when it comes to the homeless appropriation, which is sort of a supporting tenant of my hypothesis. Again, I'm attempting to avoid that bias, right? But there is a lack of information out there when it comes to the fashion industry's accountability and recognition that they are appropriating homeless street style. So lastly, um, sort of asking for advice and help. I found these sources and the Susan's Place Fashion Show was a show run by a former resident of this homeless shelter. And she hosted a show in which all the models were current residents of the the homeless shelter and all the proceeds went to funding their mental and physical health care and then this second source right here this copy of comparing two labels it actually compares daisuke obana's fashion show to another fashion show that albeit the models were not homeless people themselves like in the susan's place still was influenced by what they called street style but in the case of daisuke obana's the models were told to slouch and look down all the time um, in this comparison, this comparison fashion show, the models were told to act in a much more celebratory way. And the overall consensus from attendees to that fashion show was that street style was celebrated in a much more joyous way than Obana show. So I guess my question is like, I know that, and this is what Professor Devlin commented as well on my initial project proposal, my questions are very yes or no, which just makes it harder to provide negations to my project and also I found harder to include more helpful sources um, like these sources here and I do want to include these and talk about how the fashion industry could in fact appreciate and respect and pay homage to the homeless community um, and their existence resistance all that I want to include tenants of that that whole archive world, but I have a hard time imagining how that's possible given how rigid my executive summary and questions are. So if there's any advice on how to broaden my questions so I could maybe include these perspectives in, that would be incredibly helpful. Okay, and thank you for watching.